Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure being tonight with all of you, because while we have prepared a fantastic show for all of you, well, we're going to talk about Yucatan. It's the third episode about Yucatan, and we're going to talk about a little bit about the Mayans, their ecology, and some places that you can visit there. Also, we're going to talk about um, uh, some events here in the UK. We have Sergio Chubinsky, who is from Argentina, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about the different events that he has done here in the UK and also in, well, the relationship with Argentina. And we're going to have Hortensia Celis, that well, she's a Mexican friend, that also she's going to invite us to different events that they are going to be soon here in the UK. So, well, stay tuned. And of course, I would like to ask you to share this video with more people in order that they know what the Latinos we are doing around the world and also not only the Latinos, all the people that they are linked with the Latin America culture or the Latin American region. So thank you very much for follow us, follow us in all our social networks, please, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. You can find us, subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel and also here on Facebook, if you can put the bell there, you know that that reminds you every time that we're broadcasting a new video. But remember that the Latin America show is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. London time. And well, before I tell you what we're gonna have next show, I would like to say hello to mis amigos, Whitney Nuchere, no? Hello everyone um, from the USA. I hope you're having a very enjoyable evening and thank you for joining us. Looking forward to doing some more Spanish lessons, different topic and some slang. So stay tuned. Brilliant, my dear Whitney. And on the other side in Clapham Junction, we have Roger Alarcón. Hello everyone. I knew you was waiting for us. So stay tuned because it's the Latin American show. Thank you very much, Roger. And also, well, I would like to invite you uh, not only to share the video, we, as we said at the beginning, I would like to, well, first to say hello to all people that they are watching us. Here we have Abhijit, uh, Caro Carniol also. Abhijit is saying happy birthday for the third episode. Okay, thank you. El Shvieta, she's saying, Buenas noches a todos, Gering Dancy, hola a todos. Uh, well, Elisvieta, uh, she wants like bad comments, I think so, from her side that she is supporting and saying, well, viva Italia, viva Argentina. So, well, anyway, so uh, Nancy Castillo, buenas tardes desde Orlando, Florida. Thank you very much. Um, uh, well, so here we have Liliana. And well, something that we're gonna have next show, and I don't want that you miss next show because we're gonna celebrate Colombia is going to be the Independence Day, and this is just a little piece about what are you going to enjoy next show? Roger, please. Well, remember that, well, we're going to have the Salsa Tone uh, next show that, well, is like people that they submit and they send us the email dancing. We are uploading all those videos to our Instagram platform. So, well, is remember to follow us and give us a like, ask your friends to do exactly the same. And we're going to have the finalists uh, next week. And it's going to be, there are going to be 10 that they are coming. And we're going to do a poll, you know, that, well, you can vote for all of the, well, or your favorite one. So here in the Latin America show, you are gonna see it in a couple of minutes more. We will let you know at what time we are going to upload all the videos. So you can start voting, but remember this is gonna be extraordinary event. And of course, well, just follow us, give us a follow 
and also give a like to the video that you like and remember support all these fantastic people that they are sharing their skills and they are dancing and they are doing their best. So, well, before this, I think it's time to go with the first part of this that is with me, Kevin. Yes, thank you. So my first task is to ask that you put your microphones on mute. Yeah, thanks guys. So <laughs> my, my, my naughty students, there we go, yeah. Um, okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to Making Spanish Simple, the first part. And since one of our topics has to do with music, I figured we'd learn some vocab associated with it. And we've done this before a little bit, but I'm going to expand the vocab a little bit more so you will see and let's begin. Okay, so one moment, please, while I pull up the slides. So first of all, what is music? Let's start with the general words um, that we have talked about last episode. And here they are. We have la musica, which is music. We have una canción, which is a song. If you want to say the song, we learned articles uh, a while ago. We'll have to go back and review them. That'd be la canción. Un éxito. So un éxito can mean one of many things. In this context, it comes from, there's an expression that says tener éxito, which is to be successful. So un éxito is a hit song because it's a success. Okay. So you have una canción, one of your regular songs, but a top song that made the, the charts, that's un éxito. And um, la letra, in this case, it's a false cognate. It means lyrics. And it's a word that typically is, even though in English, we might use it in a plural sense, like lyrics. In Spanish, it's la letra, um, typically. And there are a lot of words that where we see that in Spanish, which we'll learn next time. Okay, moving on. So you have los géneros. Los géneros are the types of music. And there are many, many types of music I tried to pull from some of the more common ones. So you're going to see a few examples that we saw last time. Um, one of which is la música clásica. So la música clásica, as you can probably guess, is classical music. Uh, you have, and you're about to see some, um, what do we call this? Spanglish, right? La música sol or el sol is sol music. Y el jazz is jazz music. Now, typically we, the, the J we pronounce as a H, but because this is a, um, a word that comes from English, we pronounce it as if it's in English. Okay, moving on. El blues, blues. La música pop, this is short for la música popular, which is pop music, popular to many people. Um, la música house, I've never gotten into this, but a lot of people like it apparently. It's house music or el house. And then el rock, which we're going to touch um, upon in a little bit in this episode. So again, lots of cognates here. Some of them start with la musica. Some you just take the article L and you stick on the word after it. Okay, so I decided to do, I put el rock again because we are going to talk about this on tonight's episode. But I also decided to put um, some other uh, the rest of these genres are genres you will absolutely hear in um, Spanish speaking countries, such as el tango. We're going to briefly mention that. Um, la salsa, el reggaeton, la bachata. We talked about that in our first music episode. We had a bachata song and el merengue. Okay, so these are words that you would have seen um, when talking about them in English. And this is how you say them in Spanish. So again, el tango, la salsa, el reggaeton. La bachata y el merengue. And um, a G before a U and an E um, makes a G sound, just so you know. So you don't really pronounce that U when we have words like that. And again, these are uh, lots of, what do you call this, genres in Spanish speaking countries that you'll see. So now let's ask you a question. ¿Qué tipo de música prefieres? Okay, so if you prefer pop music, you'd say prefiero la música pop or popular. If it's el tango, you'd say prefiero el tango, uh, la bachata, whatever you decide, prefiero, and then the type of music. So throw it in the comments. And in a minute, I'm going to go over them because it takes my Facebook a minute to register. So while you guys are doing that, I'm going to and take a quick look here at some of the words if you need some reinforcements. And Roger and Enrique, pay attention. I'm going to ask you this in a minute too. Yeah, you got to think. I know you can't snooze off in Spanish class and here. Okay, so take a quick look at these and throw it in the comments below. Here's the list of more Spanish speaking 
cultural music. Okay, perfect. So throw it in the comments below, prefiero, blank, whatever you prefer. Okay, while you're doing that, let's go through just a couple more words, basic words, okay? The first one, I'm sorry, it's mean. I know lots of festivals have been canceled this year because of COVID, but hopefully you'll need it in the upcoming year. And that's un festival. That is a cognate, okay? It's the way we see it, is the way we assume it is in English, and it's correct. We have false cognates, too. And we're going to talk about those another time because I don't think we have any on this list tonight. Un concierto. Okay, so that's a concert. And notice how the C, the first C is a K and the second is a S sound. A C before an A, um, O, or U makes a K sound, but before an E or an I makes an S sound. Concierto. And un concierto, typicamente, tú tienes música en vivo. So music live, en vivo o en directo. On carne y hueso, but that's a different one. Okay, that's those are a couple of ways to say live, a performance that's live, whether it's music or whatnot. And then una entrada, un boleto, un billete are various ways to say a ticket, not just into a concert, but to other events as well. So, with that being said, I'm going to go back to this question and we're going to see what people put. Okay. So, uh, and if I miss one or two, please, Enrique, then help me out because I think yours is a little faster than mine. So we have Abiji, prefiero la bachata. Yaya, prefiero la música variada, varied. Okay, it doesn't have just one preference. Perfect. Gabriela, prefiero jazz. Muy bien. Música clásica. Ooh, very nice. Me too, especially, you know, when you just need something nice and soothing in the background. Karen, prefiero mucho tipo de música. Ooh, mucho tipos, pero en vivo es mejor. Yes, live is better, I agree. And I think we're all missing that right now. Um, and then I don't know if I'm missing anyone else, but before I ask that, Roger, Enrique, ¿qué, qué tipo de música prefieres? A mí me gusta el rock and roll. I love the rock and roll. So yes. I cannot go with any of you to a concert because you want jazz and classical music. So I need <laughs> rock. I like most of the ones that we I put on this presentation. Y Emike, ¿qué prefieres? Uh, well, actually, I like all kind of music. En español. Me gusta, prefiero, en realidad prefiero, no sé, la música clásica, eh, pop, los artistas que traemos aquí. Ah, okay. Very politically correct. Nicely done. Yes. Perfect. So stay tuned for the second segment, which we have, I know, yeah, <laughs> which we have not just slang, but slang from the Yucatan. So stay tuned. These are new words we haven't seen yet. That's it. That's exactly. all I got. And something that, well, is different. And, and it's like when you are broadcasting, uh, Whitney, that you say directo and live or in mm -hmm. vivo, there's mm -hmm. a different when you're broadcasting in Spanish. When you say yeah. live, it's like this show that is happening live now. Directo is like they recorded, but mm -hmm. without editing. Right. Yes. So that's exactly that's how what it I was, mean. but it's not live right. in that moment. Yeah. Right. But the, the, the point is, yeah, live means that it's kind of like what we call in English unplugged, where you don't have, you know, nothing's edited. So you're kind of going with it and hoping that everything goes well. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, like for example, yeah, the couple of but what I'm saying like is, for example, yeah, the couple of interviews that we're going to have today, because well, of course, well, our guests they have different live. kind of activities, so while they are yep. like direct, because well, it's like we, uh, it's like how we have them. So actually, we will move forward yeah. and we will start talking about Yucatan, as I said at the beginning. Yeah. So we're going to understand a little bit more about what is the archaeology and what are the Mayans, etc. So. We have Carlos also that well, he's an extraordinary uh, tour guide um, in Mexico. And let's listen to this interview. Well, let's watch this interview. Yeah, watch this interview. It's very interesting. And watch the theories, uh, which is one of the things I love it. Just mm -hmm. pay attention. Yeah, it was really interesting. Well, as I told you, ladies and gentlemen, so well, we have Carlos Sosa, that well, he is a tourist guy, and he's going to tell us a little bit more, a little bit more about Yucatan that we have talked before. So, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, well, good, good afternoon for you, Carlos. Good evening here in London. How are you doing? Fine. How are you? Thank you for the opportunity. 
Well, uh, for us, it's a pleasure knowing more about Latin America and this particular show, learning more about Yucatan. So, well, I would like just to start like asking you, what made you get into tourism first? It was by accident, as in many cases. <laughs> I was uh, I was going to school, and the uh, economical situation wasn't really that good at home, and I decided to take a job to help in a way with expenses. And a friend of mine who was running a travel agency invited me to go and work with them. So I started doing that, at the same time trying to combine it with the school. But one day, I was uh, in charge of uh, coordinating the tour guides of that agency, and the owner called me and said, I have an important uh, guest that has to be sent to uh, Chichen Itza and just assign a guide to him. He said, well, we got no one. Everyone is out. So he said, you go with them. And once you get to the site, hire a guide to, uh, to show him the place. So I did that, but it was a, it was a disaster because the guide I hired wasn't really a guide. I don't know who he, where he came from. So in that moment, I said, no, <laughs> this cannot be done. So somehow it motivated me to learn more about the Mayas. So uh, when I get back and I told them what had happened at the, at the site, uh, one of them told me there is a course at the Institute of Guides in Merida that used to take about three years that was run by the uh, anthropology school and INA, that was the Institute of National History and Archaeology. So if you wanna take it, we'll pay for it. The agency told me, so I decided to take it. And this is how it all began. And besides that, my uncle was a professor at a school in Merida of history. And I always liked history and I was very close to him. So I, was, I used to go to his uh, workshop. He was a sculpturist. So in that way, I was getting more involved with history and learning more. And let me tell you, Maya is probably one of the most fascinating civilizations you can ever get to. Because the, the fact is that uh, with this kind of uh, civilization that we have here, the day, or I mean, any minutes that you learn more about them, the more confused you are. <laughs> and the more you wanna learn and the more you, and the more you should read about them because nothing is said yet about them. A lot of the, uh, a lot of information that we have, we have to say it that way, some things can be proved, other ones have not been proved. And it's only a proposal, it's, that's a hypothesis that is being offered by several people, different people. And this is something that still has to be proved. Yeah. So yeah, because actually it's like they disappear and, 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 and a lot of people, they don't know exactly. It was not yeah. a legacy, like someone can tell you the proper story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem, the problem is that uh, the, the, few, the few writings that were rescued or were found here are not enough in order to uh, get, to, get uh, to know that kind of writing. It's a very sophisticated and complicated writing, the hieroglyphics, that unfortunately we are not certain that can be translated properly. There's no Rosetta Stone in this case. Let's say it that way. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. And not having a point of comparison with another one, this is speculation. Even though uh, the, I, I know that I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be crucified by saying this, but a lot of uh, a lot of the versions that we have about hieroglyphics uh, translation, it is something that uh, has to be proof, has to be backed up. It cannot yeah. be. The, it cannot be that from nowhere the knowledge will come. Yeah. yeah, correct. And, and of course, well, that depends about different backgrounds, people that they exactly. what do they understand. Yeah. And sometimes they are from different countries. It could be related to many things, but it's like, totally. yeah, it's as you're totally. saying, it's an the formation, and that's it. Yeah. The own formation and perception, and it's very subjective. I mean, people will have, uh, we can see it in any topic that you choose on the, on the Maya history, about the same topic, we're going to find 15 different versions from 15 different archaeologists. So that says something. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that this kind of leads into our next question, because, you know, you've worked as a tour guide in various parts of Mexico and for various international agencies. And you just talked about, obviously, history and the Mayan culture and history. But what else made you choose to guide tourists around the Yucatan? In addition, well, one, of, one of the reasons is that I love it. I mean, I love history. Uh, I'm so much involved with the Maya civilization. That right. somehow I I wanted to try to change a little bit this kind of uh, myth that has been created as far as uh, the way how many people see the Maya nowadays and the way how we can see it from here. And sometimes uh, I think it's a matter of uh, not having enough information from different sources so we can compare. 
we can analyze and, and just start like, uh, just put them on the side, what can be true, what is not true, what is logical, what is not logical. There's so many different versions on this that sometimes when people come and they go, the, the vision or the perception that they have of Mayans are bloody people, that sacrifice people, that eat the hearts and so many other different things that satanizes the, uh, the, this, uh, this incredible and magnificent uh, etnia. And sometimes you come to points and say, no, it cannot be that way. I mean, people that were so advanced in astronomy, mathematics and physics and architecture cannot rely in blood in order to have a control, in order to create a whole history, a whole culture. And if we look at it, that's long to say, because if we start talking about that kind of situation, we can compare with what has been found in places, what it has been written, what has been created in a way. A lot of information that we have about them is coming from Spanish chronicles. And we know who the Spanish that came here were. We're not talking about the race, we're talking about that particular group that came here that were mainly soldiers, inmates from prisons that were free in order to start an enterprise that they didn't know if they, they were not sure if they were gonna ever come back to Europe. Mm -hmm. So they had nothing to lose. And you cannot really rely in what people of that kind of uh, cultural level can tell you or can understand. Yeah, and, and actually, I think so you're right? highlighting something interesting because it's like how an advanced culture that, well, it could be, and we can say it because the archaeology, I'm sorry, just for the for the um, architecture that they have, it's like, okay, let's, let's uh, put in one side all the rest. But with the architecture that we can see that it's just a it's, it's, it's amazing the way that they manage it. So it's just incredible how they build all these cities around, how they treat them as barbarians, you know, True. as saying that, well, it's like they were like, as you were saying, all these sacrifices and everything, because it's just a story that is not like something that we can say is a fact. It's something exactly. believe mm -hmm. that part. Exactly. And it's easy, it's easy to understand. Somebody that has no education, that has no culture at all, will never understand that something can be uh, educated. I mean, educational. Like uh, the Spanish will never understood, or I'll say the Spanish, Spain is a country that was from later on. These conquerors that came here, they never understood how people could actually predict eclipses. Mm -hmm. And this is something for them that was, uh, remember that on those days there were burning witches in Europe. And these people here were predicting eclipses. They were working with solar movements and the seasons and everything else and physics. And there's so many different things involved with that that science was right there. Now, we should not forget something that is extremely important in this. Mayans were humans. And as any human, they had the same kind of situation, the same kind of uh, approach to life as we do nowadays. They did not respect nature. And this is one of the reasons why they collapsed in many places. Ah. The, the, the ego, the ego of all these groups, and we're not talking about nowadays, we're talking about thousands of years ago, the ego has been always the same in humankind. And ego is to show off how much power I have, how right. powerful I am, and I have to show it in many ways. And one of the ways that the Mayans made a mistake was that in order to build all these structures that you have seen pictures of them, which are some of them huge, big ones, and there were thousands of them, there were thousands of cities and the Maya land that is 300,000 square kilometers that covers all the Yucatan, Belize, Chiapas, Guatemala, San Salvador, and Honduras, part of those countries. So we're talking about a population on those days, according to the archaeologists, of around 16 million people in total. So in order to build all these structures, they had to bake the limestone. And to bake the limestone, the, uh, thousands or millions of tons of, of limestone in order to create or to make the, the mortar that was going to be used, the stucco that was going to be used, they had to bake them. And to bake them, the only way how they could do it was cutting trees. In regions that we don't have the same source of water or same amount of water that in some places of the Maya land can be found, it was a critical situation. Like the northern part of Yucatan, we don't have any rivers. We don't have any lakes. It's all limestone as all the bases of the peninsula, but this place is, is closer to the coast the uh, topsoil is very shallow. And the limestone situation doesn't allow the water to remain on the surface. It fills it through the stone and it flows down to the ocean. That's why we have the cenotes and different formations that we have in the Yucatan. So not having a good rain and having a deforestation, constantly de deforestation at certain length or certain time after that, nature collapse. And if we can see most of the cities collapse about the same time that is known as a late 
or the late classical period, or, or running around the 900s. So this is the time when most of the classical city collapsed in collapse because that was how long nature could resist to all deforestation. So that shows that the same Mayas, in a way, put a, put a line on their fate. Besides all the situations, war that was caused probably by the same situation of the drought, the, uh, the, the society that was created in a way that was uh, like, they were like, uh, like clans, they were like dynasties. So they never share knowledge with anyone else. So they will keep the power in the same family. So they will remain in power always. So intermarrying was another situation that have created probably genetical problems that at the end, the new generation were not capable to learn what they were supposed to, to continue with the, uh, with the use of knowledge in order to control people. So that is very interesting. When you go deeper into this and you have time to do that, the, the, the uh, let's say the, the visual or the concept of the Mayas will change a lot. Well, and I, actually I think so. it's, it's very interesting because it's something that, well, as they used to say that, well, we should learn about the history to avoid all these kind of issues. But well, it looks like we haven't learned enough about our previous cultures. I know so, it, it, history uh, changes every day, Enrique. The history is like a like a living being. Every day there are new discoveries. Every day there are new coming new things coming out, and that forces us to change the history how it's written. Yeah. Just remember, just remember who writes the history. The winners. Right. winners. The well, winners. Yeah. And they can write yeah. whatever they want to. And unless we have another version, we will never be able to compare what they say and see, okay, this is logical, it can happen, it cannot happen, this is not true, this is true. So it's a very this is what makes it so interesting and so attractive that you have to be keeping updated, reading constantly, whatever is written, no matter who did it, or no matter how famous he is or how uh, let's say how knowledgeable could be, he could be. But this information that we're having, this is information that we have to digest and compare, and then probably we'll get to the truth one day. Well, absolutely, yeah. because you know what they say, those who, uh, what is the expression, those who repeat history, sorry, those who do not learn history are condemned to repeat it. So it's exactly, it's really exactly. To know everything to help. And Move and this is what is happening with me, that we, need, we never learn of the deforestation and we're repeating it. Yep. Yeah. This well, is that something is a, that is being repeated. <laughs> that, yeah, that is, I, I think, so like a good message as well. Of course, we have to take care of our, our nature and everything. And of we course. have to be very conscious. And just like moving forward about all the places that we have in Yucatan. And, I, and it's something that I would like to ask you. It's like, I've got to split this question into like, what are the famous cities or towns or places that you let tours? And on the other side, which places maybe they are a little bit undervaluated? that well, the tourist should see or should go. So it's like the top one and the one that maybe they are not in a rating, in a high rating, but people they should go. Well, the, it all depends on the on the interest of people, of course, but in the state, just in the state of Yucatan, we're not talking about the whole peninsula, it's, all, it's called peninsula of Yucatan. We have Campeche and Chiapas and yeah. Quintana Roo as well. Chiapas is out of the peninsula anyway, but it's Quintana Roo and Campeche. But just in the state of Yucatan, we have so many things that can be done. You said before that how many days the tourists will stay here? If they can a month, so they can see about fifty percent of what we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is a lot of things to do. I mean, uh, whatever people wanted to, we have the archaeological sites, we have colonial cities, we have nature, we have uh, a lot of reserves where you can see fauna and flora. Yucatan has the third largest colony of pink flamingos. And uh, the, the individuals, uh, the population in Yucatan is not as large as the one that you can find in Africa, in, 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 in Kenya, or in Brazil, because those ones in Kenya, you're talking about more than two and a half million individuals. In Brazil, they're close to a million, but we only have about 85,000 in the Yucatan, but it makes it the last, I mean, the third largest colonial, I mean, colony of flamingos. So this is something for bill watchers. This is a this is a this is a paradise. We have about 584 different species. Out of them, about 90 are migrants that come during the winter time, and the rest are residents. So this is something that can be done. Bill watching, nature. You can do kayaking on the estuaries. You can do sailing out on the coast. Uh, we have the cenotes also. So the ones that like scuba diving, they have to be certified to do the cave diving. But on the open cenotes, they can do with the regular open water certification. Mm -hmm. And besides that, speleology, 
Spelunking, let's call it that way. Spelunking is also a great activity that can be practiced around the Yucatan. We have more than 1,200 caves in the Yucatan on the southern side, which is the terrain is higher in relation to sea level, where we can find all kinds of uh, caves. Since the, the, since the very easy ones to the extreme ones that you have to be crawling through very tight restrictions or you have to be rappelling down, that is adrenaline that can be used in that one. And besides that, the fishing, the, the kayaking, as I mentioned to you before, we have uh, biking routes in so many villages. And when we talk about culture, we have cities like Isamala, like Valladolid, like Mani. It's hard to, name, to mention all of them, but the tourists that will come here will find a lot of things to do, a lot of places to go. And besides that, you have, been, you have done the, already the program of gastronomy, so you know, you know that that is extreme. Uh, that is, a, I would call it extreme activity because you, you can gain weight so easy with that. <laughs> that, is, that. That makes it eating in a gastronomy in Yucatan extremely, extremely extreme. <laughs> and, and just like when you were talking about uh, archaeological places, it's like which ones they are like the most famous ones? Well, the, the most famous, we have to start with Chichen Itza. Yeah. Because of the seven modern wonders, Chichen Itza is on the line. And that is what everyone wants to visit. Uh, they say that if you come to Yucatan and you don't visit Chichen Itza, you didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> and also we have another one that is magnificent. It's a different style of architecture, a different environment that makes it also different, which is Uxmal. But we have a, at least, I don't remember, but it, very close to 20 different sites that have been restored, open, that people can visit. And nowadays, because of the pandemic situation, many of them are closed yet. They are not open and there are restrictions to visit some of them. But we, we expect that this will be changing soon with the control, with the vaccination, with a few other measurements that people have to follow because some people don't believe in that apparently. But we, as this security and this uh, is more control on, on the pandemic, people, places will be open again. And they can visit many of them. And some of them are practically not visited. And some of those are so interesting as the other ones, which are the biggest. But we have places like, uh, like Oshkin Tok, like uh, Chak Multum, the, the Ruta Puk, which is another region be, uh, on the south. And Ekbalam is visited, it's growing. Ekbalam is one of the last cities or places that was open about 20 years ago. They finally opened it. But also we have many other ones that are scattered around the state that can be visited and they are as interesting as the other ones. Each one is different to the other one. We cannot say the style is different. I mean, it's the same in many areas, but every city has a variation on the same style that makes it so interesting and so, and so unique in, in many ways. Yeah, and I think so. Just as you say, it's like it's interesting that part because, well, sometimes when we are visiting archaeological places, people sometimes they believe that it's going to be the same. It's another period. Exactly. Or, or, Some people <laughs> said, "I have seen one stone. I see, I have seen all of them." <laughs> yeah, but I think so. It's like, and, and I think so that the big difference, as you can say, is like between, for example, Ushmal and also Chichen Itza. It could be mm -hmm. like a very interesting contrast because it's like completely exactly. different. Even both of them, they are pyramids. It's like completely different shape, different. Yeah, the, uh, the style, course, the, the, style the style is different. The distribution. It's a lot of things that are involved with that. The environment, the kind of environment where they are built, also makes a big difference on the on the decoration, on on the density of population. There's a lot of things. Everything is related to the environment in a way. Of course. That will lead. That will lead the way how all the cities were developed. Now, I actually have a question about the kind of tours you offer. I know you mentioned certain destinations, and I do think it's important to talk about the ones that everyone knows and the undervalued ones that you've just mentioned. But what are some of the tours that you've offered um, in the Yucatan? For example, like, are there certain activities? Do you offer specialized tours? Can you tell us a little about that, please? Well, one of, the, uh, one of the things that I like to do is to go behind the roads. Normally, we go behind the tracks. So, of course, we visit the ones that are known because that's what people come from. But also, when we have the, uh, when we have the opportunity to offer something else, we, I like to always go to places which are not much visited, archaeological sites which are not visited, reserves that are not the most uh, popular ones that can be, that you can go and visit them because we can always find 
normally the number of people going to a place will will make the flow of the life vary. And if there's a lot of people, birds will go away, crocodiles will go away, or you know, fauna will go away. So when you go to places which are not too much visited, the chances of seeing them are higher. And so we do this kind of, I, of course, I do the archaeological, the archaeological tours, which I really love, but we go to different places. And this is something that I, I really feel passionate about archaeology, about history, the Mayas especially. But also we got out to, uh, to reserves and do a lot of photography. I, I'm, I'm involved too much with photography. I'm, a, I'm an amateur photographer and I love <laughs> it. And, uh, <laughs> and also I, I organize groups of photographers, photographers going to these places and we spend, we haven't done it now because places were closed and uh, with all these kind of situations and besides the weather. I mean, to, to do this kind of a tours to the reserves, you cannot do it on a rainy season. Yeah. Too much rain. And when the rainy season comes, then you can be eaten alive by mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. And besides that, if it rains, the equipment will get wet and you're gonna just uh, ruin it. So this is something that can be the best time to come to Yucatan, I would say this between the end of November and even by May, but starting from April, May and June, it's hot. Okay. There's no rain at all, but it's hot. So people that are not used to hot weather, they should not come in those months. Now, if people can take it, that would be probably one of the best times, especially for fauna. What is the reason of the fauna? As I told you, we don't have rivers and lakes. So wherever there is a, there are some natural springs, but not so many of them, especially on the forest, on the reserves, that's where the animals go to drink and to hunt. We have jaguars, we have pumas, we have deer and wild boars and monkeys and so many, the fauna that we have is really, is really rich. So when you go to places during the drought, which is be drought begins in January, but the peak of it is around April, May, and June. When you okay. go to this place where there's water, for sure, you can, I can always assure that I will, will see most of the animals that can be found in that particular region because of the lack of water. So they concentrate in that particular spot. Okay, but, um, and that's great to know for people who are interested in visiting the flora and fauna of the land, but are there any special like events during that part of the year or other parts of the year that you would recommend going to the Yucatan for in addition to what you just spoke about? Well, you can, they can visit the villages. On the villages, you can, they can find a lot of different things. Besides that, they're gonna get in touch with people who are descendant of the Mayas. Some people say the Mayas disappeared. No, they never disappeared. They're here. They never left. Yeah. It's a society that collapsed, but the common people, the peasants remain here. And in some of those places, you can meet with the, with the craftsmen which makes all the crap that we can buy in some of the marketplaces and some of the archaeological sites. You can try the, uh, the real Maya cuisine in a way, even when it's already mixed with the Spanish influence and also around, the, around Merida, you can also see how certain kind of a Lebanon food influence is found because of the migration of Lebanese people to Yucatan. But still, there are dishes that you can get to eat in, this, in these villages, which are considered to be the traditional Yucatan cuisine. Okay. So well, those ones, and you can go to places like colonial cities, like Valladolid, like Isamal, like Tecash on the south, with Tecash also, it's, it, I could say that is the headquarters of people that like Spelunkin, because there's so many caves around that place that are staying yeah. in Tecash a couple of days that allow them to have time to go to the caves and do all the kind of things. And there are some archaeological sites in the area. One of them that is Chacmultun is very close to Tecash, and Chacmultun is an amazing place. It's, it's small, but really beautiful and interesting. Well, and definitely. I'm oh. uh, sorry, Whitney, go. go. No, 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 go ahead. In addition to that, are there any like festivals during the year that people can go? Well, the festivals were canceled because of the pandemic. They used to have the Trova. We used to have the, uh, the Trova and they started with the jazz festival that could not really work out because it came fast with it. Okay. Hopefully, I heard that uh, they are trying to recover or to take again these projects but the trova is with the uh, with the trios, the the, the the boleros, and this type of uh, Yucatan. Yucatan is known in the country for its music. Some of the most famous uh, composers are from Yucatan. One of them just died some months ago, Manzanero. Yeah. And besides that, we have other ones that, unfortunately, because of their age, are dying. We have lost three other in the last uh, two months. Okay. They, they were elderly people. But, and uh, but anyway. Music is really, really important in the Yucatan. And there is, uh, um, there is influence 
from the Caribbean islands to Yucatan and the music, from Puerto Rico, from Cuba, from Colombia, the bambuco, which is a genre of music. Bambuco, it's very well known in Yucatan and it's one of the bases of the Yucatan Trova. And there used to be a festival between Co Colombia and Yucatan for the bambuco. But unfortunately, oh. all these kind of uh, activities were canceled because of the right. situation of the pandemic. Yeah. But it, but it is good for our viewers to know that for when the pandemic really eases worldwide. I, I am sure that it will be, it will be start again. It will be starting again because this is something that has been seen some years ago, and it was a success, and people really love it. So this is something that's part of the culture that we have in the Yucatan. So I don't think it's going to be left on the side. I think right. that all those activities are going to come back. Right. And that's why we I wanted to ask about that specifically, because obviously every tourist has different wants, needs. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So it's important for them to know what they can see when so they can make an informed decision about their. And trip. also and also yeah. the city, the city of Merida has a lot of cultural activities. Practically every night there's something going on around the main square. We have a, a symphonic orchestra from the state that performs six months out of the year at the, at the theater called Pe Peón Contreras. Okay. And most of the activities are for free, except the, the orchestra that had, well, they have expenses, they had to pay musicians, they had to pay all these participants, so they had to collect some money, but it's worth it. But the rest of most of the other activities are, are free, and they are developed in parks and the squares nearby the main square. So this is something that people can attend to in the evenings that normally on the evening. So once they go out on the tour or they go out to do anything else, when they come back, they have an option on the evening. And as you talk about gastronomy, you know that we have a lot of restaurants around the city that can be also a good option for, for everyone that wants to get some uh, more grams on that. <laughs> well, definitely, I think so. Yucatan sounds like a fascinating place to visit. It is. And, and that people, they can live different kind of experiences, a different kind of travel. It could be, as you were saying, offers a lot of different alternatives for people that, well, they can enjoy different experiences. And I'm going to put you a very difficult question. And it's just like a, basically almost at the can end I of back this up? interview. Huh? Can I back up? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like... The difficult one is going to be like, if you will choose two places that you like, which in Yucatan, which one would be? But depends on what kind of uh, style. For you, for you in, in your experience, for you. It's like you and well, like Carlos, Carlos Sosa loves to go to these places. Well, yeah, that is a really tough question. I know, I know, <laughs> really because you're tough. a tourist guy, I know. <laughs> really tough, not only that, because I like so many of the things that I can see or you can find around here, that if put in that way, well, of course, one of them will be going to the wildlife research taking pictures, photography, that could be no doubt about it. And the yeah. other one visiting either archaeological sites or cities, but in those cases, you have to be really, it's hard to decide, because like Isamal is a beautiful city that has, uh, that has for the ones that like photography Isamal is a perfect place because they, that will be mainly photography about architecture that's what you can find there okay. but also Isamal has something else besides being just another place for for pictures the history of Isamal is very interesting it involves the three different cultures the Maya the colonial and the modern one because you can see building Mayan buildings surrounded by colonial houses the colonial city grew where the where this Maya city was located, which happened with uh, most of the places. The only difference is that like in Merida, like in Valladolid, those places, all the Maya buildings, most of them were destroyed in order to build new ones, but in Isamal, some were respected and they are still visible, not in the cases of many other cities. Yeah, I know. But, I, I know that it you was really, a tough you really question. put me in trouble there. Huh? Yeah, I know. I know it was a tough question, and uh, apologies for that. But it was more like <laughs> normally we used to ask this kind of uh, questions because I know that it's going to be a challenge to choose. Always ask one of those tough questions. So yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that you got a you got a good uh, a good aiming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one last thing we wanted to ask you so that our um audience can follow you and learn more where can our viewers find you like on social uh, media or whatnot if you want to i can give you my my email great and i don't have so far i don't have anything like any i already put them on instagram but i haven't really done anything 
in particular in Instagram. I haven't posted any pictures, I haven't posted anything, which is something that I should do. I always said, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And I said, as you know, we say in Mexico, mañana, mañana, mañana. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't, mañana doesn't come. Well, yeah. mañana is mañana, so today is not mañana. So yeah, today next, is mañana. <laughs> yeah, the following day, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I have to do it, I have to do it. But my, but uh, my, in my Instagram, you can find, look for me for like Carlos Sosa or Carlos Sosa Estrada which is my, my mother's name. You know that in Mexico, we use both names. Yes, of course. It's the father and the, and the mother name. So Sosa Estrada is my other name. Uh, okay. And my email, in case that, uh, that somebody wants to email, is Balam, B, B, B as, in, as in Bravo. Yeah. They're all, not, not capital, um, como dices minúsculas. Small, yeah. small letters. Yeah. Small, small, yeah, small. Balam. B A L A M B E H nine. Okay. And that's yahoo.com.mx. Okay. And Facebook, and Facebook is also Carlos Sosa. Great. Or Carlos Sosa Estrada, either one of those. Okay. Perfect. But I promise that I, I promise that I do something in Instagram. I need to do it. <laughs> My daughter is always telling me, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? They say, well, probably I need a whip. <laughs> a whip <laughs> <a movie. laughs> Carlos, thank you very much for your time. It has been no, very useful you, to Rita. know you, a little Rita. bit more about the history, about Mayans, and also knowing more about what are the different alternatives visiting um, Yucatan that I think so. We are not just like hungry to go to different places, Yucatan. Well, any moment you feel like. Uh, any moment you feel like doing something else, let me know. Let oh, me yeah. know. I'll be more than happy to do it. Well, that could be fantastic. Yeah. You can even choose a topic for each one of the segments and say, let's talk only about this, about that, about that, so we can go deeper into each one of the, the topics. Sounds That'd fantastic. And let's make a deal with that one. Yeah, that let's sounds do it. good. Sure. There's, yeah. there's only one, one little thing that we'll ask you. Let me know. Uh, in advance, because I have to check the schedule, see, see if I'm going to be in Agreed. Merida or yeah, not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, we can yeah. actually program it and set up the time and the day, checking your uh, your uh, appointments and my appointments to see what they can be matching, and we'll do it for sure. With no doubt. Perfect. Excellent. That's that's brilliant. So thank you very much, Carlos, for being here. No, it with was a us. pleasure. And yeah. well, of course, it's like see you in Yucatan soon. Yes. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you again. So it is Carlos Sosa and well, you know, and you have the details. If you want to know more about Yucatan, if you're planning to travel, I know that, well, all of us, we have a lot of different plans and we are just hunger to go to some place. I think so Yucatan offers a variety of different places and different activities that you can enjoy there. And well, following with our, uh, well, I would like to say thank you. I, I have seen a lot of comments here that while well, they have been talking about uh, the food that we had in Mexico, uh, actually they were talking about uh, El Pastor that well is, uh, is basically similar to the uh, shawarma that we have here in London. They could be like the same one. Um, and well, of course it's like, uh, I, I can see a lot of people, Annalise, uh, Gabriela Aguilera, Anas, who they are here connected, uh, Gary Dancy, who is uh, also telling us that well, we need a long trip to go there, definitely, if you are planning to go to Yucatan, and also, well, it's like knowing about Mayan, so well, I have a couple of comments here from Yaya, so thank you. I know that well, just that everybody knows, I know that Yaya is uploading all the videos on Instagram, so, well, it's remember that, well, it's like, uh, we will let you know when all the videos, they will be there, you know, that you can start voting for them. And remember that, well, the final is going to be next Tuesday here when we were presenting Colombia and we will celebrate with our friends from Colombia. We will celebrate the Independence Day. Yeah, there are some of them there. So it's like, you're going to start voting for them. Remember that the 10 who they got more likes, they will come. And of course, do not forget to follow us, that is part of the requirement. Follow us, give us a like, and uh, of course you can share uh, this video and also uh, well, ask your friends to vote for them. Also, well, I can see Pamela Rawlings also saying uh, that's so interesting and amazing history lesson. Yes, that's correct. So moving from the history lesson and later on, we're going to come back to Mexico and the Latin American event. But now I think so Whitney, you have our next guest. 
I do. I do. So um, our next guest, Sergio Shushinsky, is a man of many talents, many of which are tied to the music industry. In addition to running rock to music tours in London, he is a promoter and producer of many concerts here in London, uh, worked with the mayor of London organizing the Thames Festival and organizing seven different international tango festivals. He's dabbled in the food, publicity, and TV industry as well, and he's here with us to talk about many of these endeavors and his connection to his beloved country of Argentina. Again, due to a scheduling conflict, we also pre-recorded this interview, so please sit back, enjoy, and learn more about our friend Sergio Shushinsky and all the wonderful work that he does contributing to London. Thank you for joining us um, this evening, Sidco. We're very, very thrilled to have you. Um, first of all, can you tell us why you dedicated like part of your time? I know you have many projects and we'll get to that, um, to tourism, particularly rock tourism. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's a, it would need a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Um, the idea of um, uh, the, it's not basic. It's not tourism, a hundred percent. It's rock and roll uh, linked to tourism. To be honest, and it's a project that we started a couple of years ago with Marcelo uh, Lamela. Marcelo is the brain behind uh, Rock is here. Rock is here. He actually he wrote he. Uh, he has three books uh, where he talks about rock and roll in uh, London, rock and roll in Buenos Aires, rock and roll in Manchester, which is the last book that he released. Basically, you know, the information that you can find is related to the places, the landmarks, and all the information related to the artist or your favorite band the location, pictures, and the whole story behind that specific place. So when we met, actually, um, he was invited to an event uh, that, that that event took place at the um, British Embassy in Buenos Aires. He met a friend of mine there, and Marcelo was basically uh, organizing, making a sort of presentation of, a, of the book. And that friend of mine told him, oh, if you are planning to go to London, you should contact Sergio that. Um, he's been there for a while and he knows, he has many contacts and he knows a lot about the music and rock and roll and he's uh, been organizing concerts. So okay. um, on the following day, he contacted me and he said, he sent me a message saying, I'm Marcelo, I'm the creator of uh, Rocky Sear, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna be traveling to London next week. And basically I would like to, to have a meeting with you and, and, and show you what, what, what Rock, uh, Rocky Sear is about. I say, okay, that's great. But at the same time, I was thinking about creating a solution, a mobile solution, a mobile app where uh, you can have information about those specific places about related to rock and roll. Um, everything started, uh, do you remember when the movie uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was released? Uh, when was it? Uh, two, three years ago. Um, I went to the cinema uh, with uh, five friends of mine, five friends, and all of them have a connection with rock and roll producers, um designers a cameraman that works in uh, tv and cinema and we went to the cinema uh in chelsea we watched the movie and when we the movie finished we said wow couldn't believe it and one of them says eh, i think uh, freddie mercury lived in this area and the other says no no he lived that way and the other way no 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 not that way the other way and i immediately thought these guys that know almost everything about music and they love Queen and Freddie Mercury and everything. They don't know where uh, Freddie Mercury's house is. That means that there is a potential. Mm. 
So I thought, okay, I'm going to put all this information together in a solution and people can have access to all those details. So uh, Freddie Mercury's house is near, just to give an idea, near Elscourt Station, just near. Okay. Roughly. Um, so um, that was, and, and that was exactly you know, a few weeks later when I met uh, Marcelo. So I had the idea, Marcelo had all the content. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, and we had Marcelo on around this time last year, last summer. Um, is, you, I know you talked about a couple um, artists. Are any, what's the link to, Ar to Argentina? Is there any link to it with what um, you're showing? And yeah, we have, yeah. If you have a look at the, um, the app at the moment, it's a web app. You can have access. Okay. You just type uh, rockishere.app and you're going to have access to points of interest of mm -hmm. hundreds of points of interest in Buenos Aires and uh, in the UK. Okay. We have more than 3,000 uh, 3, points of interest. It's a lot of information. So, um, the yeah, imagine 3,000 points of interest. So, you, whatever you type, any band, uh, artist, uh, it's going to be probably, uh, it's going to be there. Um, the only thing you have to do is, if you don't know what you're looking for, just press uh, the option around um, uh, near me, and it's going to show you all the points of interest uh, in your area. Um, that means probably uh, just around the corner uh, is where, is, I don't know, the flat where Jimi Hendrix lived, and you didn't know. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably where you know the 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 cover of um of a I don't know a Rolling Stone magazines uh, you know a picture of a of a you know specific album or or, or video clip uh, mm -hmm. company you know or, or certain buying shot in your neighborhood probably you have no idea so you yeah. you can find all that information uh, in that solution the thing is. We have so much information is, uh, that we are uh, putting you know, little by little. Uh, and we, at the moment, all the information is uh, in Spanish because that's information that we have. We don't mm -hmm. have time and the resources to translate all that at the moment. Um, so what we have is more than, more like a, a demo, but it's still working, working really, really well. If you are in London, uh, just open uh, rockies here dot, dot up and you're gonna be able to, what you have you know run your you know run your your the the area where you're walking where you are looking at and you say oh that's the place where uh, John Lennon uh, lived or you know, whatever you can uh, if you are a fan of um, uh, the Beatles and a lot of information there yeah. Well, that, that, is, that is good to know because, well, it's like actually, well, I think it's a good option like for our audience that, well, as they are learning some of them is Spanish, so well, they can read a little bit of uh, the history and the different events that happened here across the UK in, uh, well, respecting to, to rock, related to rock. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask you because, well, you said that, well, you traveled here, you met Marcelo, etc. but it's like you move here and how hard was uh, to start up uh, in a new country with a different language and a different culture. How that, challenging was? Yeah, that, that was in 2002, imagine, when the economy collapsed in Argentina. Um, I had two options at that time. You know, I, was, I had a background in international business and in, in technology as well. At that time, I was uh, working, representing five companies in, back in Argentina. Uh, importing and uh, sorry, representing those companies and exporting their products. Um, so uh, when the economy collapsed, you know, where there was a problem with the uh, raw materials and all sorts of things related to the international uh, international business. So uh, um, I decided to you know to to move forward. I, I don't know what to do, and I had two options, either go to Miami or come here. So I decided to come here because everyone was going to 
to Miami or the Argentinians were going there. The three uh, favorite destinations were Italy, um, Spain, and, and Miami or, or, or LA. You know, like in, in, so I decided to go to a different place. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be hard. You know, we we are all of, all of us in the same situation. We are going to be competing for the same job or for the same position or whatever. So I had two friends living here and they contact me and they say, don't waste your time, come here, we can help you. And that's the way I started. So I, when I arrived in 2002, um, I, um, the first thing that I, I did, I think everyone does exactly the same. Uh, you check uh, if you have people from your community living in your area or in the same city or in this part of the country. And uh, that's why that's the way I um, I decided to create the first website for the Argentinian community in the UK. Um, so that's the way you know, I started creating a massive, a massive database. People contacting, accessing the website. We didn't have a social media at the time. Do you remember social media? Something quite new. So the only way to contact um, the rest of the community was through the website or to Yahoo Groups. At that time, Yahoo Groups was one, one of the tools that we, we were using. Um, so uh, I was creating a sort of a blog and putting all the information related to you know, my experience living, living in London, living in the UK, how to open a, a bank account, how to buy a, what's the best option if you want to buy a um, travel car. Or if you want to call to Argentina, do you remember at that time there were those uh, cards, uh, phone cards that you buy? Yeah, yes. Different yeah. Price, different <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, uh, uh, so I was basically creating a blog and putting all that information. And yeah, and then it was, yeah, when I arrived, it was a little bit, a little bit shocking, not that much, because I used I travel a lot when I was working for uh, in my previous life when I was working international business. So uh, traveling was part of my you know everyday uh, uh, business. I was traveling like probably uh, fifteen days uh, per month. I was abroad visiting wow. clients and participating in. Um, uh, in events and in trade shows and etc etc visiting uh, factories and um, so I had you know I lived I lived abroad quite you know for a long time and um, but to be honest I spent more time uh, at the airport rather than you know having with the, uh, with the with the client especially when some uh, particular places when you travel to Chile for example in the winter because the mm -hmm. uh, valley, you know, sometimes the fog is so thick that you are planning, you are planning, or you think that you're gonna leave at eight o'clock in the morning, uh. and you are at the airport, uh, probably it's two or three o'clock in the afternoon, and you are still waiting. Yeah, um, so that's why that's why I'm always saying that you spend more time at the airport rather than having a meeting with your client. But anyway, yeah. Uh, well, definitely yes, and 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 actually, like well, I remember that well. It's like we we're talking to the audience, and well, the the Spanish rock, uh, of course, Argentina. Well, it's like one of the places that well, the rock has been like a part of the places that explode massively, and with right. very good artists and singers. And well, in in that way, I would like to talk about a little bit because you tell us a little bit about the, the part of the tours and all these things that they have been produced here. Yeah, whereas like, well, I know that well that you brought uh, Gustavo Cerati, yeah. Uh, and also what was your experience about that and 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 and, and who others you, you have brought? To, yeah, to the, to the, the way the way I started is a little bit, uh, probably a little bit funny. Uh, let me tell you the, the story. I created a website 20, that I, I launched the website on the 1st of September, 2002, arenin, arenin.uk. Arenin means Argentinos and Inglaterra. So we are, there are only two communities with, uh, uh, with branding, 
arenin and venenin, argentinos en Inglaterra and venezolanos in Inglaterra that I created it with my, my Venezuelan partner. But anyway, I um, launched the website in September. In October, uh, I organized the first event for the community. Mother's Day, we gather, uh, we organized, not a party, just a gathering, you know, we went to, um, we, we met in a restaurant in El's Court, a Spanish restaurant. I had a chat with the owner of the restaurant. He gave me the basement. The basement. He said, no, no, yeah, that's fine. You can use the basement and to meet your friends. So um, I posted uh, the information about the event. I sent a couple of emails to the new group, to, to the Yahoo groups, and 40 people turned up. Yeah, but Argentinians that were just yeah, arriving the same way, you know, they were yeah, experiencing, uh, experiencing exactly the same, you know. Um, so the need to to meet more people, to meet the more Argentinians. So um, I organized that first event, 40 people. The second one, we had 150 people. The third one, I had to move to a different place. The third event, we had 260 people. And then yeah. I moved to, to a bigger place. We started organizing parties on a boat. Um, opposite. Um, uh, what's your name? Um, um, oh, um, right opposite, let's say, um, Oxo Tower, there is a boat on the other side. Uh, okay, by Waterloo, yeah. Yeah, yeah my okay. morning, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, actually, yeah, the, the, the boat had the capacity for 400, so it was full. The first day, the very first event that I organized, I had a meeting with a with the manager of the, the boat. That was Temple, actually Temple Tube Station, right opposite Temple Tube Station. Um, and I said to him, listen, you don't know me. Uh, I've been organizing events for you know, a few months. Uh, the events are growing and we, I need a bigger place. And um, basically what I'm doing is gathering the Argentine community, uh, playing some music, and we offer some traditional food empanadas and choripanes and and steak sandwiches and the guy said um and which days are you planning to organize this venue i need saturdays because we have people coming from all over the country not only from london right? which was true people coming from cardiff birmingham brighton uh, oxford so um the guy said okay he said i don't know you but okay i like the idea I gave you a Saturday and that was in December. Okay. And I organized the first party there and because uh, the option that you had, uh, there were three dance floors, three different dance floors. So I decided to have one with tango, one with uh, Argentinian rock and pop and, and Latin pop and the, and the third dance floor with the eighties music. Um, so first event, 700 people turned up, but the capacity was 400. So people were queuing. It was, I remember it was really cold. It was raining. People were queuing outside. And you know the way it is in London. You have the capacity is 400. You will never have 401 people there inside because of it. Yeah. Uh, they can have a problem with the license, with insurance, etc. So till yeah. two o'clock in the morning, you could see the people queuing and trying to get in outside. Oh. So oh, goodness. But one thing led to the other and, and people, you know, I was receiving messages of people asking me, why don't you bring artists? Why don't you organize a concert or what? Yeah. And I started thinking about it. And yeah. one day I was living in, in Fulham at that time. And I decided to check the website of a, um, uh, Gustavo Cerati, Gustavo Cerati's website, number one singer, um, leader of a, of a soda stereo. Um, just to have an idea, you know, to, to see if there was any possibility. So yeah. I checked the website, there was a telephone number and an email address. Mm -hmm. So I sent, I sent an email saying, my name is Sergio Shushinsky, blah, blah, blah. I live in London. I've been organizing events for a, a long time. And I was wondering if uh, you are planning a 
uh, tour or, or coming to Europe for any event, concert, whatever. And I would like to to organize a, a, a gig in, in London. Mm -hmm. And after, after a few minutes, believe it or not, I received an answer. Normally, the website or those emails, you know, they are talking about a very famous singer, not only in Argentina, all over America. Yeah. Normally, normally receive hundreds of emails. And I thought, I the, think they will never read my email. Or After a few minutes, I receive an answer saying, Thank you, well, one of the Gustavo's uh, assistants. Uh, thank you for for your email. Uh, I'm gonna pass it on to um, Fernando or Nando Travi, Gustavo's um, manager, and he's gonna uh, send you either an email or he's gonna call you. Uh, and um, the following day, I receive an email from the manager saying. Okay. We are actually, thank you for the same, thank you for contact, contacting uh, um, our website. I was sending an email and we are planning a tour for next year. That was December, 2005 when I had that, when I sent that email. Okay. We are planning to go to Spain mm -hmm. next year. And I'm gonna have a chat with Gustavo, but the, the idea sounds uh, very, very interesting, very tempting. Yeah. yeah, for any every single musician um, uh, artist coming to London is you know like going to paradise. You know, especially when we are talking about rock and roll. Um, so that's the way I started. You know, the connection with the with the artist and his manager, and then I told them guys, I'm gonna be traveling to Buenos Aires, uh, and. And Nando Travi, the manager, said, "Okay, why don't you come to visit us, and and we can have a continue the conversation when you when you are here." Yeah. So basically, I went to Buenos Aires to visit my family, mm -hmm. and uh, meet them. I, and I, I met them. And I went to the to their studio, and they were just finishing the recording of. Um, one of the best records ever, albums ever, which was Ahí Vamos. Mm -hmm. that was. Um, yeah. I arrived just in time to see the last note um, that he was playing. Um, we had a chat and then basically they said more or less the same. Nando said, listen, uh, we still don't know you, but we like the idea, Ahí Vamos. So that's the way yeah, you know, he's the Ahí Vamos, same name as the, uh, <laughs> the same yeah. name of the, the album. Right. So basically the way we started our relationship, and they came to London on the 12th of October, 2006. So I produced the whole thing um, with wow. the other, other two partners. Yeah, um, that, that's incredible. And he opened, he opened the doors to, uh, uh, to an industry that, I never dealt with before, you know, it was something completely uh -huh. new. Uh -huh. So after that, I started receiving emails and phone calls of managers or other artists saying, we want to go to London. We know that you've been working with Gustavo Cerati. We want to be there. And then it was the other way around. I started saying, mm -hmm. yes, I want you. No, I don't want you because <laughs> no, the, the reality is, you know, it's very simple. In London, you have like 300 gigs per day. Not now, but normal right. times in a different circumstances. You have like 300, 300 concerts per day. Small concerts, free, cheap, expensive, or, or VIP concerts, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So it's very competitive. So in order to bring an artist, you have to make, you need to make sure that you're going to make money. You're going to sell tickets. Yeah. Because you're competing with everyone, yeah. And extremely high. Yeah. yeah. And so also, then, sorry, yeah. Go sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then I brought. Um, I organized in, in London three concerts of Fito Paez. Mm -hmm. uh, three in London, one in Paris. Then uh, Andres Calamaro, uh, Fabulosos Cadillacs, Los Pericos. Yes. Um, the Mexican band uh, Molotov. 
two concerts with Molotov. They are amazing guys. Yeah. The and the most incredible guys. You see them there playing the rock and roll, and but they are hilarious. Yeah, such a great uh, band. Yeah, um, I. The oh. others. I actually, well, I wanted to ask you a quick question too, because I know we have limited time and you've done so many things that rock music isn't one of your only endeavors. You also have um, organized the International Tango um, Festival for like yeah. seven years and Thames, um, the Thames Festival, which I think are different. Um, what was that, what was that experience like? And and why tango? I mean, I know you're from Argentina, so I'm sure that's an it might seem like an obvious question, but for someone who works a lot in rock, that's quite a big switch. So can you tell us a little about that as well? Yeah. One day, yeah, I received a phone call um, on my mobile. I checked the number, I didn't know the number. As, and someone said, Are you Sergio, the organizer of the Argentine, the, the events for the Argentinian community? Blah, 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 say yes, I am. I'm calling from the mayor of London office. I said, yeah, I was saying, yeah, okay, yeah. I thought it was a joke. He said, yeah, don't worry, I pay all my taxes. And and probably on the, on the other side, they were saying, what are you talking about? It was, yeah, really, yeah, it was a person from the mayor of London office. So no, no, we want to talk to you about an event. Um, and I said, okay, <laughs> you know what to say because I was trying to make it a, a joke, and it was a real, a real, a, a, someone from the mayor's of London office. And so um, uh, we had a meeting. I went to, they, they got the information uh, because a friend of mine um, in the past, he organized a couple of things uh, for the Mayor of London and Thames Festival. Um, mm -hmm. And he gave them my my contact details, not like they were they found it up, you know. Yeah. Um. So we had a meeting, and there were uh, seven, eight people around the table, and, and me. You know, the first time having a, this. That was in two thousand and five as well. And they said, okay, well, we organized the uh, the Thames Festival, which is the biggest festival in London that we've been organizing for many years. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we want to talk to you is, first of all, do you know anything about tango? Uh, yes, of course. I'm from Argentina. From actually, I'm from Buenos Aires. Of course, I know. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue about tango, honestly. <laughs> but we never say no. Um, so um, they said, okay, uh, we are thinking about having an area uh, as part of the Thames Festival, have an area dedicated to tango because mm -hmm. of uh, tango is amazing. the connection between tango and, and jazz and classic music and all that and, and the dance. And, okay, yeah. Um, would you be able to organize something? Do you have uh, connections? And yes, of course, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Send us a, an idea, send us an email with a, an idea of the program, a draft of the program starting at uh, mid, uh, 12 o'clock at noon, I mean, and till 10 o'clock in the evening. So 10 hours program, matching completely, a 10 hour program of activities related to tango. Okay. I, as soon as you know, I left the meeting, I started making phone calls to the tango organizers in, in London and tango dancers that I met in the past. I said, Cesar, are you available? Hey, listen, I have this opportunity. Are you available? And, uh, are you interested in taking part of Yeah, yeah. Call Ivan, another dancer. Ivan, listen, I have this opportunity, blah, blah. And then I call the musician, Guillermo Rosentula. Guillermo, listen, we have this opportunity, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. Um, so I prepared the program. 10 hours and the program was starting with workshops for uh, uh, for beginners. So if you wanted to learn the basics of tango, you just turn up and you have the workshop at 12 o'clock. And one o'clock, a little bit of a milonga, which is social dancing. And at two o'clock, another workshop for everyone. You know, everyone, yeah, kids, uh, and um, couples, uh, people that just, you know, 
they had no idea about tango. They just met them and they were, you know, wanted to learn the basics, so the, uh, well, the basic steps of tango. And so I proposed that. And then um, some performances uh, with professional dancers, live music, DJ sets, and then DJ set with um, electro tango at the end. You know, with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. when the sun goes down, you know, we were the idea was to change a little bit and have take you know, advantage of the of uh, the place and put some light. So we were changing to electro tango, and the last hour from nine to ten, changing completely uh, the style and moving towards Latin music. So everyone can show, you know, join and, and have fun for one hour. Oh, cool! Sounds so like they, they they loved it. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I send the, uh, the 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 budget. I need that's what I need, you know. And it was the first time I was dealing with something like that. Um, and they they uh, they had a look at the program. They say, yeah, we really like it. Why do you come over and we we continue with the conversation? So um, they said, would you be able to organize it uh, on Sunday as well, Saturday and Sunday? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, of course, but the only thing I have to do is to change a little bit. He said, don't worry, you don't need to change anything because people come in on Saturday, it's not the same that, uh, you know, on Sunday. You're it's the same for, it's yeah. the same for both days. Yeah, no? yeah. makes sense. And, yeah, and, and I said, yeah, but the, the budget going to change a little bit. Of course, go ahead, whatever you need. Uh, you know, you never think about those things. The, the, the sponsors were Thames of Waters, uh, Barclays. Big names were the sponsors of the Thames Festival. Uh, so, uh, and then they said, yeah, we really like it. Uh, go ahead. Uh, we want you uh, welcome on, uh, aboard. Uh, you, we want you to organize this, this uh, festival, this part this, that you manage, you're going to be managing this area. Um, you have to put the name to the event. And I call it River Tango. River Tango, it was by the river and tango, and, and it was River Tango from 2006. So we organized the very first event. And I told them when, when we finished the meeting, I was you know about to leave and say, hold on a second. So I'm the new kid in this block, the new kid in the block. Um, which area am I going to be managing? Yeah, I'm the new we had I, I just arrived probably they're gonna tell me the beginning where was with the um uh, London Eye or Tower Hill um the uh, Tower Bridge because you know it was a three and a half kilometers of festival. Yeah so no, no 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 you're gonna be at Tate Modern Gallery, the geographical center yep. of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing, I couldn't believe it because you have people coming from from London Eye, people coming from Tower Bridge and people crossing the Millennium Bridge at the same time. So that yeah, area okay. was always packed. Yep. And the, the festival finished. Then we have a meeting, a sort of a feedback, a review, and they loved it. And they said, uh, listen, we love it. Um, the program was excellent. The quality of the artist was excellent. Everything mm -hmm. was, you know, whatever you said, uh, starting at two o'clock, uh, very punctual, you know, following the program, as you promised. And the other thing is, you know, that area belongs to Tate Modern. Yeah, of course. That area doesn't belong to GLA, to Great mm -hmm. London Authority. That, right, all so around the, it, yeah. The guys from, G, the, from Tate Modern, the director of Tay Modern said, we want the, the, the tango guys again next year. We want them here again. So that's where I started. Oh, wow. yeah. So I was at Tay Modern for three years, 2006, seven and eight. Then we moved to the scoop, you know, opposite the, um, the town hall. Mayor. Yeah. The, and then we did the um, National Theater. Outside the National Theater, there was a huge, you know, now there are installations and things like that. But before, a few years ago, outside mm -hmm. the National Theater, you had a huge uh, uh, space, perfect space for that, you know, um, with the perfect surface and everything. So we're moving 
from one place to the other. And then I, I got in touch with the people of uh, um, South Bank Center. So uh, we had a winter river tango at South Bank Center. The, oh, cool. So yeah. it was, and then and we had, at some point we had 35 people of the attendees coming from abroad. Uh -huh. just to give it idea, yeah, just for tango because well, the event was growing yeah. becoming more and more famous and once we had a sort of problem but it was always a good problem i call it a good problem uh, mm -hmm. we had a do you remember the, the magazine the time out was the, 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 the time out is it was at that time mm -hmm. the bible of entertainment you could find absolutely everything there and we, there was an article about River Tango. It was just one page dedicated yeah. to River Tango. Oh, wow. And the other page, the whole page dedicated to Thames Festival, to the whole festival. Okay, so, so good coverage. Yeah. Great, but like very important yes. in that way. It has a lot of uh, yeah. people that they were interested in. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but people from so. Thames Festival said, guys, we don't like that because, yeah, because you are part of Thames Festival. You say, it's not my fault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not a separate. Yeah, it was not a separate event, but it's like, yeah, but well, you you, you got the, the highlight exactly. of that one. And yeah. we are, I think we are doing the right thing. So they asked they asked me to change the name of the event uh, from Thames Festival. So what I did is because we had so many people coming to the day till 10 o'clock, I decided to hire some venues like mm -hmm. the Bloomsbury Ballroom and yeah. other venues so we could continue with the milongas at night yeah so i was using the same artists that they, they were coming in playing during the day or performing during the day at night and we we'll, uh, and we were organizing what we call the the gala milongas so you should imagine all the women yeah. dressed with those amazing <laughs> uh, and the guys with suits and ties and yeah yeah every every nice outfit mm -hmm. so in that way uh sergio well of course we will looking forward to have more events for this one and of course well we will invite you that will you let us know when you will have another event that well maybe maybe we can just promote it here and also what well, we can tell to the audience that well they can attend this kind of events and I would like just to ask you, just to finalize, it's like where people they can find more about you. Okay, yes. may, there are many ways. The, our website is arenin.uk. Again, arenin means Argentinos in Inglaterra. Just Google Argentinos in Inglaterra, you know, the first page, you know, it's going to be showing arenin website. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram is arenin. Uh, Arenin Oficial in Instagram and, and yeah, Arenin Oficial and Arenin Oficial Oficial in Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the Facebook group and the Facebook page, and all the information about our events and other activities you can find them there basically. Um, okay. And okay. our next event, actually, first of August. I'm going to be okay. DJing at the um, final uh, of the um, Argentinian, uh, Argentine Cup, uh, Polo Cup. Oh, at cool. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, doing the music there. So it's going to be a huge picnic. Okay. And people are going to be able to you know, have a, organize a picnic and, and watch uh, International Polo, the, the final of the Argentine Cup here in Richmond. Great. Um, well, we'll look forward to supporting that and you. And thank you so, so much for joining us. And um, our viewers will we'll make sure to put your social media in the comments. And we look forward to speaking more with you um, on a later date. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, okay, Sergio, and well, of course, you well, you know that well, it's like, as I have seen in the comments, that well, it's a successful story and perseverance mainly that well, how to bring artists to the UK and also the relationship with Latin America. And talking about Latin America and talking about events, I know that we are almost running out of time, but well, this is going to take a little seconds. Like, well, it's like we, you know, that well, we have, um, we have uh, promoting one of the events that is a social. South Social Film Festival, 
that is going to be the following next week. And um, hold on a sec. Um, well, that is our next guest as well. Right there. So, <laughs> um, so Roger, I think so. We have a video first. Yes. Have a look at this. ¿Qué pasó? Well, that is something that is coming, and remember that this is going to be the 24th and the 25th of uh, July. The 24th is going to be dedicated to Mexico, and the 25th is going to be dedicated to Argentina. So don't miss out the South Social Film Festival. And we have our friend Oren Hortensia Celis as well. Uh, she is from the Group of Folklore Mestizo, and also for the organization for artists, uh, Latin artists here in the UK. So hello, Hortensia. I think so you're on mute. You are on mute. Yep. Still on mute. You have to hit the mute button. That's it. That's Perfect. It. Excellent. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. Hi, uh, thank you for having me in your program. I had to get used to talking in English with you guys as well. <laughs> I'm so used to talking in Spanish with you, Law. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's like I would like to ask you that quickly. It's like, well, um, we have, well, first of all, you are in one organization that is, talk, is related to different artists, that they are Latino artists as well, or the Latino community artists that they are here in the UK. I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about what is this in general? Hola, yeah, the organization of Hola is the organization of Latin American artists here in, U in the UK. Um, what we do is just, you know, try to get the Latin American uh, community together, um, everything to do with the arts. Uh, not just the uh, folklore music, but also musicians, singers, um, artists, you know, painters, uh, even poets as well, writers, everything that you, you can think of about to do with the arts. Um, we're trying to get together and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a way for us to organize our own events as well and uh, promote the Latin culture. So yeah, that's, that sounds uh, really good because, well, I think so one of the things that you're doing is like integrating the different cultures that could be from Colombia, from Mexico, from, uh, I think so, Ecuador, um, I don't remember exactly, Peru, Ecuador, and I don't remember Bolivia, exactly Bolivia, Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico, uh, Chile, um, Paraguay. Uh, we've got lots of different countries, re Dominican republics as well, we always work together and uh, we, we always try to do as many things as possible, you know, but obviously with the pandem pandemic we couldn't do much uh, last year, but this year we're back and uh, we already have a, lo a lot of things up our sleep. <laughs> Well, that actually, you know, that well, one of the uh, main ideas of this show is, of course, launching and supporting all the Latin American artists and all the people that they are engaged with Latin America. So uh, I know that, well, there are some events that they are upcoming, and maybe I don't know if you would like to invite the audience uh, just to not only to follow the different social networks that you have, but I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about these events that they are upcoming. Yeah, well, we're going to start doing um, some workshops for Colombian and Mexican dance, uh, folklore dance. This will be in Hammersmith. Um, this is for um, adult, well, children and adults as well, but we're going to be giving all the information uh, in our page of uh, Ola 
on our on our page and um we're just inviting everybody on saturdays to come on saturdays and and learn cumbia jarabe tapatio you know all the mexican dances and colombian dances and we possibly will have some salsa as well yeah so in that way and just like a word a do people they require any kind of outfit any kind of skill or what do they require to go there just lots of energy lots of fun and uh desire to learn you know different things different steps and uh, even though it looks it might look easy you know to do some footwork from the jarabe tapatio you know you it looks like you're just stamping your feet but it's everything is got their own style and everything you know uh, even cumbia as well having to move your hips from you know circular as well it has you know you have to know how to do it you know? and it's, it's fun to learn it's fun to learn different things so you don't need any experience uh, you can come along uh, it doesn't matter how uh, how experienced you are or if you don't know how to dance at all come along as well yeah and also while well, you're going to be participating in the south social film festival that is going to be the 24th what can, what can the audience expect about what they can they are going to see there well, we're going to be doing a, a workshop in there as well for the Mexican hat dance uh, or the Jarabe Tapatio, because uh, it's a very popular dance from Jalisco, which um, a lot of people know already, but they know the songs, but they don't know the steps. So we're going to teach them a little bit, you know, how to dance the Jarabe Tapatio, especially now that we're going to be uh, able to dance with the partners. So uh, all the restrictions are going to be lifted. So we're going to be dancing uh, a little bit of a Jarabe Tapatio and then performing with uh, Mariachi Adelitas as well. Okay, so people they can expect that well, there's going to be music, there's going to be workshop in order that they can yeah. learn how to do the different steps and to enjoy this kind of culture <laughs> from Mexico. And also, I think that there is another event, right? That's right, we're going to go all the way to Birmingham. Uh, we're going to Birmingham on the 31st of July. Uh, this is um, an event that's going to be is organized by the by, by a church, um, which has a, la um, a large uh, Latin American congregation. And uh, they're organizing this Latin American festival, you know, for their own people in the area. It's like a little site, you know, of Birmingham um, for people to learn about more, more about the Latin American culture. So we decided to go and give them, you know, a helping hand with Ola and getting all our groups together and join them and put in a bit of uh, folklore and singing and dancing as well. <laughs> Oh, well, that sounds really good because, well, that sounds that well, they are coming a lot of different events that, well, people, they can enjoy our folklore. And fortunately, of course, well, it's just keep all the different kind of, uh, well, the measures that, well, the government yeah. has in place. But, well, I think it's like a good, a good time that, well, people, they can start learning. And also that, well, as yes. you were saying, <laughs> Ola, that, well, is without age, you know, it's like mm -hmm. in the way that they can find you because, well, I know that Ola is very common. In Spanish, but this one is O A L A, right? O L A, yes. O L A, which is Organization of Latin American Artists, and um, we're going to be, you know, taking play, taking part in different events. We're hoping to do an event as well at the end of um, August, uh, which we're cooking up at the moment. You know, we're trying to get it together, and we're going to let you know as soon as it's ready. But also, just keep an eye on our, on our page. Um, because we're going to be um, advertising there everything. Two events that's going to come up on the 27th of August, which is Mexi-Colombia Fest, uh, which, as you say, is in the Mexico and Colombia together joining for an afternoon of fun. And then on the Saturday, the 28th of August, we're going to be doing a Latin festival, a taste of Latin America, for everybody to come and join in as well. And these are free events for everybody to come and join. Oh, well, that sounds like really <laughs> cool. Yeah. And do you have a where where these events are going to take place? They're going to be in Hammersmith, but like I said, it's cooking up. Everything is cooking up, so I'll let you know. <laughs> we'll let you know a little also, bit more later. <laughs> and also, while they are like uh, progressing with the other event, that well, I remember that well, our friend uh, John kind of meet you. He talked about it like a long yeah. time ago, but I think so. That's going to be in September, October, I guess. We go Fusión de los Pueblos, um, which is uh, another event which is mainly folklore groups. Uh, we get together and uh, present our, you know, different things like a bit of history of uh, the folklore music 
and also presentation. And that one is going to be in September in Elephant and Castle. Uh, like all the information are going to be in the Fusión de los Pueblos page as well. And uh, we go at least eight eight different countries from South Latin America taking part. And uh, of course, Mexico, uh, Magali and myself are going to be representing Mexico. So uh, we go Ecuador, Jones Jaramillo, uh, we go Bolivia, we go um, uh, what's called Colombia, Peru. Yeah, to Peru as well, Peru, Colombia, and uh, uh, Dominican Republic as well, Dominicanos en Acción. And uh, well, yeah, we're going to be there. And also some musicians from folklore music, you know, from uh, Inca Peru. Um, uh, expression Inca, sorry, <laughs> which yeah. they, they have musicians with the play music from the Andes as well, you know, so very nice music. Mm -hmm. well, so definitely it sounds like a bunch of different events that they are coming yes. in order to refresh <laughs> our culture, our roots. And I think so in this case, it's a, it's a good way to invite the audience and not only people that they are not from Latin America to go and mm -hmm. enjoy this. I think so also the new generation, so they are like the second generation of Latinos that they are here just to enjoy and just to understand because I know that of course, well, you're wearing very nice uh, outfits and also while well, you have been yes. uh, <laughs> rehearsing a lot in order mm -hmm. to end this event <laughs> that mm -hmm. well, um, I can tell to the audience that well, it's a really nice uh, performances that they are developing. And also, as we are saying, is to maintain our traditions, our culture, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. to extend it here to the UK. So I think this is a very fun and good way to, to learn about mm -hmm. the Latin American culture. Exactly. And not, only so, that, Enrique, not only that, Enrique, it's just like you said before, is you see visually how the cultures are going to be there with the dress, the folk dresses, with uh, the folk dances. That's going to be interesting mm -hmm. for most of our public, which are very interesting in, in the Latin American culture. Just follow the links. We're going to put it on mm -hmm. the page. Exactly. Yeah, because I mean, like you said, Roger, is um, the costumes uh, that we we bring from different countries. I mean, it's not just you know, um, some people they say costume like you know Halloween costume. It's not Halloween costume. It's like a, a proper work of art from from people from um, different countries like in Mexico we have a girl I have a, someone that makes the dresses you know which are really really uh, heavy you know they're quite heavy to to wear as well because they got so much ribbon the 26 meters of um, skirt and uh, I mean like Bolivians as well they have really good uh, costumes they're really elaborated you know as well and uh, everything is a work of art for all the costumes that we bring we bring to the to the UK as well. <laughs> well, uh, I think so. It sounds like uh, interesting. And also, uh, I think so, Orte, if you can tell us later when it's Fusion de los Pueblos and when you have like more mm -hmm. details at what time they are going to be these workshops, you know, that, that we can invite the audience. And well, if they are, have the opportunity to go to, uh, well, to Hammersmith or they are in that area or they are planning to yeah. go with their mm -hmm. children. Don't forget that, well, the South uh, Social Film Festival is the 24th and 25th of July, and the 24th, yeah. uh, Hortensia is going to be there uh, performing the Mexican dances and inviting children, adults, everything. It's more about the attitude, is to have fun, don't worry, don't think that, well, you have to wear a particular <laughs> outfit. It's like you just have to have fun and to enjoy and to yeah. learn something different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and not only that, it's the opportunity after all these months being at home, it's like mm -hmm. to see something again, all these uh, presentations, it's going to be amazing, no? And in Dolich Park, which is going to be open, and uh, we're going to enjoy that. Yeah. Even if it's raining, we're going to be dancing in the world. <laughs> <That's dedication. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I haven't danced for a while, so I haven't danced for a while, and I'm just looking forward to going, wearing the dresses again, wearing, you know, going out dancing salsa as well, which is my passion as well. <laughs> so I'm going to be there dancing from Thursday to Monday. <laughs> Okay, well, and remember that, well, next week we're going to have a lot of salsa here because I know that you're a great fan of that. And we're going to have a lot of salsa and a lot of participants that, well, just to tease the audience, we're going to have people that they have participated in the Super Sorry. <laughs> I was going to send my video. <laughs> well, okay. But, well, anyway, but we're going to have, like, also, as I said, people that they have participated in the Super Bowl. So that 
level of guests we are going to have also next show. So, well, don't forget to tune in. And, well, Hortensia, thank you very much for being with us. And, of course, thank we will be supporting you in the different events. Thank Let you. Well, we look forward to see you guys. We look forward to see you guys in the events as well, yeah? <laughs> Uh, yeah, for sure, you will see me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you will see. What, what is it? Upstairs. This. You will see this guy here uh, soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, Roger, we have to speak to you because we need. We need. Um, we're hoping to have an exhibition as well of photography. You know, so and you got very good oh, history wow. of photos, photographs, and for mm -hmm. all the Latin American events. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> Excellent. So, well, thank you very much, Hortensia. Okay, Celis, well, thank you so much, well, guys. Thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Okay. Oh. Cheers. So, well, cheers, Hortensia Celis. And remember that, well, thank it's you. like, uh, don't forget to be, well, to buy your tickets for the 24th and 25th of July to go to the South Social Film Festival. And I don't know why it appears my name there, but anyway. So, Thank you very much for everyone for following us. Thank you for your comments. I can see here like a uh, Gabriela Aguilera, Yaya Aguilera. Also, I have here like um, we are a Spanish speaking church organization. Okay, thank you, thank you, Celis, for supporting us. The 31st of Birmingham in Birmingham. Okay, yeah. So it's like a, it's the event that we were talking. Uh, uh, what else? Abby G, thank you very much. It uh, sounds like a great fun. Sounds a picnic in vivo uh, this Saturday is saying. And well, so thank you very much, Antonio Catufa. So thank you, everyone. Remember that well, uh, we are going to have more information for all these details and all these events soon. And I think it's time to go. So thank you very much. And Roger Alarcón. But before we go, let's give it again a little taste of what we're having. Okay, let's dances. give them a little tease of what are we going to have next. And also that, well, they are already on Instagram, so they can start voting. So Yes, yeah, start okay. voting. Uh, what happened? Yeah, with me. I kind of forgot my second part of the segment. Oh, uh, yeah. I would to say car. that. I want to say that, but... <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, okay, let's see if they realize this. <laughs> I realize. I know. I realize. It's in your face. It's Enrique. That's, 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 what, that's what I say. Let's yeah, give a tease well, nice. after Whitney. Thank you. Okay, let's do this after Whitney. Okay, Whitney. great. Thank you. This will be short because I knew, I knew this would run over. We always run over. So there you go. All right. So this is your favorite part, Heard on the Street. And it's Yucatan slang, which is why I thought, okay, we have to do this tonight because it took me forever to find this. Um, I'm just going to give you a few words. Um, most of them are new. There's one repeater you will see soon on some slang or words that are distinct to Yucatan if they're not slang, which I think is the very definition of slang. So the first one you have, um, achocar. And remember, I don't speak Yucatan. Um, any of this. So the pronunciation might be a little bit off. And this is a way of saying like empujar, which is like to push or to shove. Um, so that's a verb. And then another word, chan, this is like to do something quickly. Hacer algo rápido. And it actually goes before the word. So for example, if you were to use a command, you would say chan, prepárate y vamos. Like, like get ready quickly and let's go. All right, so you put it actually before the word. Typically, I would think it's before a verb, in this case, a command, like to do something quickly. And in, in, in Spanish, we say hacer algo rápido, but in this case, it goes before, not after. So it's different um, uh, in that sense. And outside of slang, it can mean um, a different word in various parts of Latin America. It could be a local tour guide, a beverage, or a reaction to something. So this is something that's very specific to Yucatan when it has that particular meaning, meaning of doing something quickly. And then on the end of this page, we have Chacpol. This is slang for perirrojo, perirroja, which is a redhead, like me. Uh, and then the last few... Generally, when we have an X in a word, an X, it's a sh sound, a sh sound. So mulish, this is like cabello rizao, pelo rizao, which cabello pelo rizao is like hair, a curly hair. Um, also, you know, supporting the mulish here tonight. 
And the last one is Haran Shah. Oh, no, last second last one. And this is uh, something when when someone says something is malich or badly done. So it could be something that a teacher might say about a student um, or whatnot, or a test or anything else. And then the last two words, I mean the same thing, shor makachi, answer a repeater from the last time you did a Yucatan, you know, um, segment. And this is what I like to tell my co-hosts on the show to do during my segment. <laughs> And it normally means be quiet. <laughs> Microphones in mute, be quiet. So that's it for this evening. And that is the quick slang that we've learned from the Yucatan. Next time we have a, another Yucatan segment, I will provide new slang, which is very hard to find, but um, I'll do that so you can have an ample vocabulary when you do get to visit the Yucatan. Cool. Thank you, Bashita. <laughs> So, hey, well, okay, that's pretty cool. So, well, sorry about that. Uh, apologies, Whitney. Um, well, but you know what? That, well, it's like we need, a, we need a bigger Aguilera section. And, and yeah, yeah, well, they were like uh, just like telling me off here they, on the comment section. Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> I'm going to check this out and comment. What were you saying, Roger? Yeah, I would say we need to put a, a, a bigger segment for Whitney. When she's going to explain us how to pull a girl in a bar. <laughs> yeah, it's, you, that's, that's, what, that's important, no? Well, a guy, in my case. But yeah, yeah, I'll teach you both ways. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking maybe but, for like next Valentine's Day, like some cheesy pickup lines. That'd be a really good thing. It needs to be before. It needs to be before because the right. Valentine's Day are prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to practice in advance or something. Yeah, of okay, course. Roger, well done. Uh, anyway, Roger, give us a tease about what are we going to have next week? We're going to have this week, next week. <laughs> Remember that you can go to our Instagram uh, Instagram account. That is the Latin America show. You can see all the videos there. Please follow us. That's the first thing that I have to ask you. And later on, you can see all the different videos that we have already uploaded there. And vote for your favorite. Remember that next week we are going to have here the 10, uh, the 10 finalists that while well, they got more votes. So remember, it's like um, please support your your favorite to come here um so, i need to upload uh, my my one you see the guys in the in the in the corridor i need to upload yeah. my one with the with the fridge yeah <laughs> you should yeah yes. and yaya and yeah. yaya she was a, she was doing the editing congratulations to yaya and liliana because they've been working a lot with those videos very hard i don't know how yeah. many they are but th congratulations to both and I want to see the Jaja's one because she did it in her corridor as well, outside of the flat. She was dancing with her boyfriend. I want to see that as well. Okay, yeah, hopefully, yeah, they can upload it. So it's, well, so thank you very much. Yes, uh, Jaja and Liliana. And also thank you to the Consulate of Colombia and, um, and also the uh, Colombian Embassy here in the United Kingdom for their support. Thank you for our friends from La Mamba Negra. Uh, that well is a fantastic group. That well, of course, you can look for it on YouTube. They have a couple. Well, they have some videos there, but it is really, really nice music. So yeah, follow them. Now I think so. It's time to go then. So, why are you having fun? 
Well, it's been a pleasure. Four minutes to 10. We did it in a record. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was an amazing program. Two amazing uh, guests and also Ola uh, Hortensia. She gave us a lot of the uh, uh, events are going to be. So thank you very much. Whitney. Thank you very much, Roger. Uh, on the other side of the world, Whitney Nocherini. <laughs> the other side of the world. I know. If you have stayed through these two hours, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's been a great show. And I'm just going to let you guys go because it's late over there. And I know some of you have other things to do, want to get to bed, have work tomorrow, and have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Perfect. Thank you very much, Whitney. And remember that the Latin America show is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. London time. My name is Enrique Gelista. See you next week. And remember to follow us on Instagram and check all those videos. Bye-bye.